Okay everybody, welcome to this video. In this video we're going to walk through a brief introduction to the AWS AppStream console. If you're familiar with AWS, you'll know that this is the URL to connect to our AWS console, which is https colon forward slash forward slash console dot aws dot amazon dot com. So let's go and launch that now. It's already got me logged in and it's taken me straight to London. Now here's some of the services that I previously visited. You won't have any of these if you've not logged into your console before. Um, and we're going to go and search for APP and you'll see it lists AppStream as the first in the list there. And I can just left click that. You'll note that because we're in London it's saying it's an unsupported region. AppStream is only available in seven places and I'm going to now click the closest one to me in London which is Ireland. So let's go and launch and look at that. Um, and basically this is the first part of the console. You've got stacks, which is what the users will see, and that's where you're controlling policies and stuff around how the users interact with AppStream. So that could be things like enabling or disabling cut and paste, uh, enabling or disabling Google Drive or S3 home folders, stuff like that. Fleets, uh, basically a, a group of streaming servers which enable you to connect to an image and, and, and copy that image to multiple different instances. And each one of those instances correlates to one instance that a user can connect to. So one user is assigned one entire AppStream instance. So if you've got a thousand users, you will have a thousand AppStream instances that need to run. You can create multiple different fleets for multiple different images. Uh, and in those fleets, you might have a finance fleet for all the finance users and applications and a HR fleet for all of the different HR applications and users and that sort of stuff. We can go now down here on the left to images. You'll note that there's a bunch of images that are provided for you already by AWS. Thank you very much, AWS. And you'll note that some are available for, and they give you the names of the instances that are available for. You've got base image, um, and then you've got graphics design, graphics desktop, graphics pro, um, and all of these are in relation to the instance or the, or the actual hardware of the instance that you're going to run the image on, so it's worth noting. Um, you will also have an image here for the AppStream sample images. Now that's where we saw the demo apps previously in the last video. Um, so you could also spin that up. And if we just click on the Applications tab here, it gives you an idea of what's installed on that image, which is handy uh, as to use as a demo uh, image in your own infrastructure. Um, on the left, we've got user pools here, and you can create users. You'll note that I have a user that's already created. Um, so this is a way of managing AppStream users. Um, you don't have to use the inbuilt user pool here. You can use things like Active Directory, SAML authentication, etc. But it's handy to know that you can use a user pool, um, and users that are added here get emails for links to connect to the AppStream instance and get, can set their own passwords and stuff like that. On the left, we've got directory configs, so you can create an Active Directory config, join your AppStream instances to a sp specific Active Directory instance or Active Directory OU, apply Active Directory group policies and settings, etc. And then the last link on the left here is a quick link of things of how to go and set up your own sample apps, how you can set up an AppStream 2 image with your own applications, and then of course finally how you can learn more about AppStream here on the left. I'm going to skip that. And we'll go back here. Um, but it's worth just having a quick look at a diagram just to get an idea of, of what we're actually doing. So here's a very, very basic overview of the AppStream infrastructure. You can see here's the stacks. That's what the end user will connect to. And the name of the stack is what the user will see. And that's where we apply some policies. So if we go back here, this is the stacks. Um, Furthermore, further down, we've got the fleets, and that's lots of different instances that run off a particular image. It's uh, we call I, I call it the Dory effect, and that basically is Dory from Finding Nemo because these images are forgetful. As soon as they're restarted, as soon as they're rebooted, as soon as the user logs out and logs in, they'll get a new image, and it will be fresh, exactly as the image is from when it's powered on. Also, commonly known as non-persistent images. So really good, kind of like a thin client really, but for servers, but it means that every time the user gets an image, you can guarantee it's as it was when it was delivered to the user. There's been no changes, there's no registry edits or anything that the user might have done or any user settings that are saved there, but um, so that's fleets and images. Fleets and images, you can see there. Um, you can, of course, connect to your own Active Directory or an a Amazon Directory or an Amazon Web Services AD, which is a service available in AWS. And then your fleets themselves can be connected via a policy here to some home shares. It could be Google Drive, it could be S3. Um, 
So lots of different options there, and, and, and that's basically the AppStream infrastructure in a very, very quick introduction. So that's the console, not a lot to it. Pretty straightforward. Um, there's a lot more involved in image creation and things like that, and we'll also talk about the AWS CLI and how to, how to manipulate all of this via scripts. Um, but we'll do that in the next video. Thanks, guys, for joining, and we'll see you then.